A week ago, GQ Middle Eastern magazine did a photo shoot with Muhammad Salah, which caught our attention. But we missed the main edition of GQ, which featured musician and artist Pharrell Williams. What the hell is this? Audu Billah. As, as I'm sure you can appreciate, this is gonna need some explanation. Sit tight. Asalaamu Alaikum guys and welcome to another episode of Smile to Jannah. Smile to Jannah. <laughs> Now I'm sure we can sit here and say he looks like someone in a banana skin or the fact that he looks like someone who's wearing a used handkerchief. But I'm sure I'm going to be accused as somebody that doesn't know fashion. But on the real though, what could the pros of this man dress be? I guess you could sleep wherever you wanted without taking your duvet. Hiding your belly fat would become easier and you'd be cleaning the streets wherever you went including dog doo-doo. Alright so what would the cons be? Well if you were to play football you'd be stuck being the goalkeeper. Whenever you decided to travel abroad you'd have to book two tickets and if you had an itch on your leg you'd have to think twice because it would probably take you half an hour to reach it. Alright so let's get a female perspective on this yeah. I will not be in a relationship with a man that is high maintenance because it looks like this whole dress comforter set takes at least 30 minutes to put on, another 30 minutes to get in the car, another 30 minutes to get out the car, and I gotta hold your comforter dress as we walk into an event. I'm not doing it. I'm not renting a sprinter van just so my man can go to an event. And he loves to wear women's clothing. Like he says, he wears Chanel's clothing, um, Chanel jewelry, uh, carries a purple Birkin bag. Like, I don't want to date a man like that because I feel like it's high maintenance and it's also competition. Where's my Daphne lipstick? For real? Oh, he wearing it. Where my nail polish? For real, got it. <laughs> <laughs> now this wasn't the only fashion that he was rocking. Here's another one which can only be described as the the chicken style? I don't know. And the hair, <laughs> and hair, they made him do poses that, let's be frank, we do in front of the bathroom mirror. I'm telling you, I'm telling you, fix your ways. I'm sure you spotted the caption which reads, the new masculinity. First of all, if masculinity is being redefined, I wouldn't trust this responsibility on a fashion magazine that dresses someone in a banana skin and makes them do bathroom poses. But indeed masculinity has been under threat for quite some time. There's about four main ways that I've come across. Number one, by constantly using this term toxic masculinity and yeah without mentioning toxic femininity. Number two, the rise of endocrine disruptors in our foods and household products. These are chemicals which affect one's sexual health and even hormone balances amongst many other things. You guys need to make sure you research this yeah, endocrine disruptors. Number three, spreading confusion amongst our children and attacking those who decide to speak out. And I, so I have rarely been subjected to more foul abuse on social media Absolutely. than I have in the last few days since this campaign started against me. There is a, an aspect of, I'm afraid, your lobby group, for one of mm. the better, the gender lobby group, which is highly abusive. It wants everybody that they don't agree with to be fired, cancelled, destroyed, and everything else. And I say that most people, most people, mm. and I say this with respect to you, most people think the concept of a hundred genders is utter nonsense. Yeah. And number four, using celebrities as a catalyst to put this across and make it seem cool. This is what I said about Sam Smith. Two years ago, he comes out as a gay man. There, we, yeah. all, we all cover that, okay. right? It's a big moment. He talks about it. We all cover it. And within two years, he's abandoned that position and now yeah. says now he's not sure if he's male or female, right? So he's a singer. He's won Best Male Category Awards for many years, right? Mm. What is he now going to enter? We now hear the Brit Awards. Wait a minute. We now hear the Brit Awards has to go awards neutral. Almost Crazy. certainly as a result of Sam Smith. Really? Really? Why isn't suicide increasing amongst men? Aren't they complaining of pressures? Isn't shootings increasing amongst men as well? Well, all of that may be true, but correlation doesn't imply 
causation. There are of course issues, but that doesn't mean that stripping a man of his masculinity and making him wear a banana dress is the solution. Of course guys, as believers, anytime there's an issue with us, we turn towards the Creator because let's face it, He knows us better, yeah? And He has created us in male and female, giving both genders varying strengths and weaknesses and eventually we come together in holy matrimony and we share those strengths and weaknesses. And all this confusion of seemingly basic stuff reminds me of a verse from the Quran where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that if we forget him, he'll make us forget ourselves. And considering our kids are struggling with a hundred genders now, it's clear the only thing that we need to identify is a Muslim. Because if we identify as a servant of Allah, then everything else will fall into place. But if we distance ourselves from Allah, then confusion will become more common than it is now. All right guys, let's leave it there. Until next time. Most people think the concept of a hundred genders is utter nonsense. Yeah. Assalamu alaikum.